Hello everyone and welcome to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'm Reverend Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor, and on behalf of everyone who is helping to lead worship, I welcome you. We are so excited that you are joining with us for this time of online worship today. I want to extend a special welcome to anyone who may be joining with us for the first time. We are so honored that you have chosen Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church for your time of worship and we encourage you to please let us know you're here using our contact form. The link to that is pinned right in the comment section and there's a QR code that you could also use to access that. We really want to be able to be in contact with you so please fill this out. There's a place there for your contact information so that we can get you our e-newsletter which has all of the information about things going on with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. There's also a place there for our for prayer requests that goes straight to our pastors and to our prayer team. So we encourage everyone to use that contact form today so that we can connect with you, uh, be a part of your life of growth and faith and worship and service and prayer and all of those things. Today we're entering into our season of sharing God's gifts. So this time of worship is going to have some wonderful invitations to engage in that as well, as, well as a special um, testimony video that we hope that you enjoy. So thank you for being here for this. And then I also want to remind you that when we join in online worship, we covenant together to participate and to be a blessing. When we covenant to participate, we say, well, we're going to participate in what's going on. This isn't just a random video you're watching. It is worship of God and with one another. So we encourage you to turn off other devices and distractions, to focus in. When it's time to pray, pray. When it's time to sing, stand up and sing and just fully participate in what we're doing. And then we covenant together to be a blessing. And that means that the way we're in the comment section together, the way that we may be joined with other people, as we're engaged in this worship, the way we're sending this out into the world, that all of it is a blessing one, blessing to everyone that is participating. Again, thank you so much for joining with us today, and let's worship. Please join us in singing Everlasting God. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we
Nancy Vereen. I'm the lay leader here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Please join me in a spirit of prayer as I offer our opening prayer. Powerful and merciful God, from the very beginning, you bless creation. You have loved and shielded your people through all joys and trials of life. We come to you this day, rejoicing in the many blessings that you have given to us. We open our hearts again to receive your word for us, to pray to you and one another, and to gather strength and joy for powerful service in your world. Be with us and bless us again. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please join me in sharing the peace of Christ. You can say, peace be with you, and respond, and also with you. Share that in the comments, with one another, with me, and with all the folks in our church community. Peace be with you. I'm Taylor. And I'm Kristen. And, and we're, we're with from Wood Lovely. Lovely. <laughs> peace be with you. Hi, I'm Connie Sims. I'm a member of the Staff Parish Relations Committee, and I'm also on the board of Wouldn't It Be Lovely. Peace be with you. Hi, I'm Abby Klein, and this is Christian. Peace be with you. Yes, indeedy, it is time for small talk. I want to encourage the children who are joining with us in worship to come in really close to your device and your screen so that you can hear and see everything that goes on with small talk. Small talk is led by Miss Laurie, our Director of Children and Youth Ministries, and her wonderful assistant, Laud the Lamb. So come in right now, really close for small talk. Hi everybody, I am Miss Lori, and this is Laud the Lamb and Cohen, his assistant. And you'll see here we have a pumpkin, a really big, heavy pumpkin. And it's week before Halloween, and it's about time to start carving these pumpkins, if you haven't done so yet. And what I like best about carving pumpkins is the seeds that are inside. I let Laud, that's, you know, that's not gonna work. We like to roast the seeds that are inside the pumpkin. So to do that, this is the grown up part. This is the part that makes my family very nervous when I have a knife, because I'm not very good with them. But so we're just gonna cut the top off the pumpkin because we have to get to the seeds. I'm gonna use a smaller knife. I'm making myself nervous. And if my husband, Mr. Nate, comes up here, he's gonna say, what are you doing? So we cut the top off the pumpkin, like so, and it's really, it's hard to do that, especially with the, the stem. Always make sure you have your mom or dad do this. Right, Cohen? Right? Mm -hmm. Right, Lod? Almost there. And then we'll have the seeds to roast, which is so exciting. I guess this is kind of one of our cooking segments, really, the, the Jeopardy music. You want one, Lon? Yeah, they're not roasted yet, buddy. So let, oh my goodness. Wow. There's something really special in here. I'm gonna have to cut a little bit more to be able to get it out. This is such a surprise. I've never had this happen before. Wow. We have a Bible and our pumpkin. Can you believe it, Lon? No? A Bible in our pumpkin with the seed. Oh, the seeds, the Bible. 
the Bible plants, God's words plant seeds in us. Yes, the Bible, God's words are like seeds. Yeah. So when you read your Bible and you read about Jesus and his plans for us, they're like those seeds in the pumpkin. Happy carving, everybody. Bye. Join me in singing, Open My Eyes That I May See. Hello, my name is Barb Eldridge, and I love being a member of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'm going to tell you why Douglas Avenue is so important to me. DAUMC has always been an important part of my life. I was baptized, confirmed, and married here. Even when I lived away from here most of my adult life, I still felt a deep connection with DAUMC. I love that here everyone truly loves, cares for, and supports each other. We are a community worshiping Christ together. When I joined DAUMC, I promised to support it with my prayers, my presence, my gifts, and my service. Being present in church services in small groups gives me strength, peace, and a sense of community. I feel God's presence in our worship services, both in person and online, and in small groups. By supporting DAUMC with gifts, both monetary and gifts of time, I feel closer to Jesus, knowing that he wants me to give freely of both time and money. I love that DAUMC supports so many wonderful causes and missions, such as Wouldn't It Be Lovely, Compass for Kids, Midwest Distribution Center, HIS Orphanage in Haiti, Washington Street Mission, the Micro Food Pantry, and so many others. And I find a joy in being part of that. Giving of our time is also important and gives us a feeling of connection. By supporting the church through our service, we can all give according to our different talents and strengths to make a difference in people's lives. But I think supporting the church through prayer knits all of these things together. We can and do pray for all of the church's activities and causes and for each other, but we can also pray for guidance and discernment to find the way that each of us is asked to give. To me, Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church is more than a building. It is a community supporting and caring for each other as we serve others and grow in our faith. It's truly a joy to be a part of this church family. Thank you.
Hello, my name is Dennis Fry, and I am a member of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Today, our reading is from the Bible, is Isaiah chapter 40, verses 27 through 31. Let us open our hearts and minds to hear what God is saying to us through this reading. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, but the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. May God bless our hearing and understanding of the Bible reading we have received today. Amen. So, last Sunday, the Chicago Sky won the Women's NBA Championship. I know, so excited. Now, I know that there may not be as many fans for women's basketball as there are for the Bears or Illini football or for the Cardinals and the Cubs. But in my house, the Chicago Sky winning the WNBA championship is a super big deal. We're so excited. We are big fans of women's basketball, uh, from the women's NBA to the Olympics to the women's NCAA tournament. We even go out to watch the Missouri Valley Conference Women's Collegiate Championship Tournament when we can. We sure watch it on TV if we can't get out to see it. So there was a lot of excitement in my family watching the WNBA Championship these last couple of weeks. Um, the Chicago Sky were unexpected champions and they had so many great storylines, so awesome. Coming into the tournament, tournament, they were the sixth seed. That's right, sixth seed, and had to play two single elimination games to get into the semifinals. In the semifinals, they faced off against the number one seed, Connecticut Sun, who had lost only a handful of games all year and featured the 2021 WNBA Most Valuable Player. Nobody expected the Chicago Sky to win, but they did. In the finals, the Sky played against the Phoenix Mercury and their starting point guard, whose name is Diana Taurasi, who has won three WNBA championships, five gold medals, the WNBA most valuable player and holds the all-time scoring record. Taurasi was voted the WNBA GOAT, greatest of all time during halftime of the second game of this final series. Formidable doesn't even begin to describe the Phoenix Mercury. The Chicago Sky features some amazing players as well, especially veteran guards Courtney Vandersloot and Allie Quigley and younger standouts Kalia Copper and Azare Stevens. But it was really the return of superstar Candace Parker, ace. That was the big story for the Sky this year. Parker has won two WNBA championships, two Olympic gold medals, two WNBA MVP awards, and returned as a veteran star with the intention to leading her hometown Chicago Sky to a championship, and that she did. There were so many great players to cheer for in the starting lineup of the Sky, and cheer we did. But you know what? I love to cheer for the bench. In basketball, five players start the game, but another group of players sit on the bench, waiting for their chance to play. In the WNBA, there are usually only six bench players, and these players have to be ready to play at a moment's notice to step in and bring energy and enthusiasm and a burst of scoring or defense that can change the direction and momentum of the game. For many games, the play of the bench players is the difference between a win and a loss. 
My family loved watching Chicago Sky bench players Stephanie Dolson and Diamond DeShields come into the game. It was like the whole team shifted gears and the pace and intensity would just take off. Now, I think the hardest part about being a bench player would be the waiting. At least it would be for me. You see, the starting players know that they're going right out on the court at the beginning of the game. But bench players have to be ready for the unexpected and unanticipated moment when they are called on. I'm always amazed, and I just love it when the bench players jump up, run down to the scorer's table, and dash onto the court ready to go from sitting still to sprinting all out. How do you get your mind and heart and spirit ready while you're waiting like that. I think that there must be some key steps to getting ready while you're waiting on the bench to play your basketball game. And I think those key steps are the same for those of us who are prepared to serve God. In our Bible reading for today from Isaiah 40, we hear that those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. So how do we wait in readiness? The first step to waiting in readiness is putting in the practice. It's hard to be ready to do something if you haven't practiced it. For basketball players, that looks like 10,000 hours of practicing ball handling and shooting. For us, for people who love and serve God, it's our spiritual practices, such as worship, Bible study, generosity, service, and prayer. Prayer is particularly important as it gives us the opportunity to talk through our lives with God. It's kind of like rehearsal where we can bring our hopes and plans and dreams to God and explore how we fit into God's purposes in the world. We talk a lot about our spiritual practices here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church because they are the way that we connect ourselves and our community into God's purposes and actions into the world. They prepare our hearts and draw us closer to God. Spiritual practices like prayer are similar to just about any other kind of practice where practiced makes prepared. That's right, practiced makes prepared. The second step to waiting in readiness is listening for the call. There was an amazing moment at the end of, the, of game four of the WNBA Finals when the sold-out crowd was so loud in Chicago that the players couldn't even hear the referees' whistles. Even in the midst of that noise, the bench players continued to pay attention to the coach, watching and listening for that call to get into the game. Some of us may be ready to serve God, may want to serve God, but we may not be paying close enough attention to hear God's call. There is a lot of noise in all of our lives. We're surrounded by a clamoring cacophony of despairs, demands, distractions, diversions, and detours. All of this can drown out God's voice of empathy, encouragement, energy, enlistment, and enlightenment. Those of us who wait upon the Lord need to be actively listening to God. Again, this is where prayer is especially important. Prayer is more than just us talking. Prayer is listening and waiting and seeking God's voice, which is sometimes loud and booming and sometimes still and small. Prayer conditions us to listen for God. Prayer focuses our attention on God. And prayer draws us closer to God so that we can hear more clearly. The final step of waiting in readiness is jumping into action. The whole point of being ready is to act when it's your time to get into the game. I wonder sometimes if this can be the hardest thing for those of us who are, well, you know, church folks. We can often do a great job of preparing ourselves to serve God, but when it comes to moving from preparation to action, we can find ourselves hesitant. 
We can get lost in our fears and reservations that we're not ready enough. We think things like, can I really share what I believe about Jesus with my friends unless I read the Bible more? I'd like to help out and volunteer in our ministries more, but do I really have anything to share? I want to financially support our church and its work, but would my gifts really matter? Let me tell you a truth. If God is calling you to act on your faith, then God believes that you are ready, or at least ready enough. A coach doesn't put a player on the court in the expectation that they will fail, and neither does God. You may believe that you're not ready, but when God calls on you, then you better believe that God trusts that you are ready. God believes that you are ready. So why not trust God in that and jump on in? Whip off your warm-up jersey and just go ahead and get in the game. This week and for the next several weeks, we're asking everyone in our extended church family to consider how God is calling them, how God is calling you in giving and service ministry through our Sharing God's Gifts program. We're engaging in worship, learning, prayer, reflection, you know, putting in the practice to help us understand and hear God's call in our lives and our stewardship of money and time and service and spirit. And to do that, we're asking you to pray, to wait on the Lord, as it were, to put in the practice, to build that relationship with God through prayer, to listen to what God is saying to you, and to follow God into the service and generosity that God is calling you. We have a simple tool to help you with this, these prayer commitment cards. Many of you have or will receive these in the mail. We also have this card available online, and the link to that is right in the comment section and available in our e-newsletter. On the card, we're asking you to commit to pray regularly during this season by thanking God for the gifts in your life, by asking God for guidance on how to use these gifts, to listen for God's direction and follow God's direction in your life. What you do is sign one card and place it somewhere where you can see it and remember to play, pray, like your refrigerator or with your Bible or on your computer screen, somewhere like that. And then the second card we invite you to bring or mail into the church. We're collecting these cards together as an offering of our commitment to pray, and we will continue to dedicate ourselves to prayer during this season of sharing God's gifts. The, uh, if you use the online prayer card, and we encourage you to do that, please print that off and place it somewhere you can see it to remind you to pray. And please know that by filling out that online prayer card, your commitment is a part of the commitments that we offer together in worship. We also have a gift of gratitude for you as we begin our journey together through sharing God's gifts. And it's this nifty window cling for you to place in your car window or other window as a way to celebrate and share Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. If you would like one of these or more of these, there's a place on the online prayer card for you to let us know, or just call the church office and we'll get it to you. Friends, it is my deepest hope that you will join with me, join with our church family in committing yourself to this season of prayer. Prayer is essential for our waiting in readiness, to putting in the practice, to listening to God's call on our lives, and to responding to God's call to jump into action. So let's do it. As we join in singing our song of prayer, Lead Me, Lord, I encourage you to make your commitment to prayer using those cards that you may have received or using our online prayer card. Let's sing now. Please join us in singing, Lead Me, Lord.
Please join your heart and spirit with me in prayer. Loving God, we come to you today with hearts and minds open to all the ways you work in us and through us. We know that prayer is key to waiting on you, to building our relationship with you, to sharing with you, to hearing from you, and to acting on the ways you are calling us in generosity and service. Please bless our commitments to prayer that we make during this season of sharing God's gifts. Bless them with the power of your Holy Spirit. Bless them with the deepening of our relationship with you and with one another. Help us to pray, loving God, as we trust in the ways you love and bless us and the world through prayer. Today, we thank you for all the gifts of our lives, for our very lives, for the resources of money, time, and talent that you give us, for work and purpose, for our church family, for Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, for all the ways you connect us through Jesus Christ. We are thankful for family and friends, for rest and worship, for healing and hope, for all the gifts that we name aloud to you and that we hold in our hearts. We ask you, merciful God, to guide us in using these gifts in the ways you want for us. We want to understand and follow you, to be a part of your purposes of healing and wholeness for ourselves, our families, our community, and our world. Please, merciful God, show us the way and help us to follow you. We bring to you the concerns we have for friends and family, for our community and world, and for ourselves. We pray for all who are sick, who are in the hospital, who are preparing for surgery, who are in the midst of cancer treatments, who are struggling with addiction. We lift to you all who need help, your healing, in body, in mind, in spirit, or in relationship. We pray for all who are in need of housing, food, safety, health care, rest, in need of understanding, love, and purpose. Merciful God, we pray for your help to open our hearts and minds to act in your ways of equity, justice, and peace in all the ways we relate with one another at home and around the world and the ways you call us to care for your creation. We offer all of it, loving God, all that we are, all that we hold, all that we seek, all that we hope, all that we give. We offer it to you, trusting in your help, healing, and guidance. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who taught us to pray, saying, Please join with me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for your generous and dedicated support of the missions and programs of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Thanks to your activities, events like today's vaccination clinic are possible and are making an important impact in our community to help keep it healthier and safer. Time and time again, members of Douglas Avenue step forward to support community-oriented activities, whether it be vaccine clinics, the community food pantry, support of programs like Compass for Kids, support of Wouldn't It Be Lovely, the missionary efforts in the community. All of these are possible thanks to your generous giving. Of course, you know we've tried to make it as easy as possible to give to DAUMC. You can use our online giving portal, and you'll see that QR code right here on the screen next to me. In addition, you can use automatic bank draft using Douglas Avenue's bank. You can use automatic bill pay through your bank, or you can just bring or send your check into the church. If you've got any questions, call the church office and Jesse will be happy to help you. Now looking forward from today's community vaccine clinic, You need to know that we're going to have another one on November 13th to push follow-up vaccines for those who received their first vaccine today. 
That'll be Saturday, November 13th from 1 to 5 in the afternoon. But before then, we've got an important outreach effort coming up next Sunday when we're going to be hosting what's become a DAUMC tradition, our annual Trunk or Treat event right here in the parking lot at DAUMC. We still need people to donate candy, to help distribute candy, so if you can help out, please call the church office tomorrow morning, talk to Jesse, and we'll get you slotted in. Once again, thank you for all you do to support the ministries and programs here at Douglas Avenue. Please join us in singing, Forth in Thy Name, O Lord. Thank you so much for joining in this time of online worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I just pray that this whole experience has been uplifting and meaningful and powerful for you, that you will join with us again for online worship, or that you'll join with us for worship in the sanctuary on Sunday mornings at 8.15 and 10.30. Again, I encourage you to use that contact form so that we can connect with you, that we can be a part of your life of faith, and that uh, you can share prayer requests with us there that go straight to our pastors and prayer team. So please do use that contact form. And now, as you go into your day, go knowing that God loves you and seeks to be in relationship with you in prayer, that Jesus Christ loves you and is with you in prayer and service at all times and that the Holy Spirit goes with you to encourage you and strengthen you. Go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen.